Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you're all doing well. This week, I want to go over the philosophy of printing your own work and how that mindset can completely change everything about your photography. I also want to break down how I did this while navigating living on the road. So if you separated photography into three different sections, the capture, the edit, and the print, I think that the print holds just as much weight in that equation as the two other variables. The problem is the transition to digital photography in the past 20 years kind of removed that absorption, that interaction of the physical medium. So if you're someone like me, I really never got to experience it. And I have to say, there is nothing more satisfying, in my opinion, than seeing my work in print. Witnessing it within a space, surrounded by the presence of other tangible things, and touching my work for the first time is almost as if it exists in the real world. I hope by the end of this video that you'll be encouraged to try it yourself, because I truly believe it can completely change your work. So I'm not an expert at printing, uh, quite the opposite, actually. <laughs> printing is an art form in itself. Think about it. What you see on your monitor is backlit in the RGB color space. And it could be an LCD IPS panel. It could be an OLED. It could be a brand new monitor or seven years old. And then you have to take that image and convert it into the CMY color space, meaning you're now using a completely different algorithm to get that image into ink on a paper. On top of that, that ink is gonna be absorbed differently onto glossy paper, onto matte paper, onto metal. And <laughs> let's not even talk about the fact that you could have a dark image that you can see perfectly fine on that backlit screen, but now you can't in print. This process is an entire industry in itself, and it'd be a lot of fun learning all those nuances. But if you're like me, you simply might not have the resources to have your work printed how it should be. Actually, if you're like me, you don't even have the space to have it printed considering I live in my car. The good news is that if you want to print your own work, you can skip a lot of those technical aspects by having professionals handle it and focus on what's more important at least in my opinion, which is the medium that those pieces are printed on and how they're gonna represent themselves in a room. When I started thinking about prints and the rooms that they would fit in, it completely changed my perspective of landscape photography. The world of those big grand images with insane dynamic ranges, vibrant colors, and extremely dark images with those little touches of light have shaped a lot of our work in the past five to 10 years. And it wasn't until I started thinking about how those images would look in a space that it really clicked. I started looking at the wall art in public places like hospitals or waiting rooms or hotels, and I started to notice and pay more attention to the types of pieces that actually made it onto the wall. I wasn't concerned with sharpness or perfect color accuracy or anything like that. I paid attention to the types of images that there were and how they felt in the physical space. This changed my photography forever, and I think it's really important to think about that for your own work, just like it's important for me to thank the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. I know many of you out there are like me and use landscape photography as a way to escape, decompress, and let go of some of the many worries that we have. Sometimes that's just not enough though. So if you've been feeling depressed, anxious, stressed, or overwhelmed, BetterHelp is here to help. I'm no stranger to these feelings and I try to openly talk about them on this channel as often as I can. BetterHelp offers licensed therapists who are trained to listen and help you. You can talk to your therapist in a private online environment at your convenience. There's a broad range of expertise in the BetterHelp's 20 plus thousand therapist network that gives you access to help that may not be available in your area. This was especially important and great for me considering I'm living on the road and finding any continued access was non-existent. Signing up takes no time at all. You'll fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you get matched with a therapist that aligns with you in under 48 hours. Once you're matched, you can schedule a video or voice session, plus you can exchange unlimited message through their app or an online browser. I just recently went through this process and I got matched with Jennifer as my therapist. And it's been such a refreshing, helpful experience so far. She's been great, but if you aren't satisfied with your match, you can always request a new therapist at no additional charge. My experience has been easy to manage, comfortable, and most of all, helpful for my own health. So I encourage you to join two other million people that have taken charge of their mental health with an experienced BetterHelp therapist by using the little link down below to get 10% off your first month. Thank you again, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. When I started thinking about my images for a place in someone's wall, I started seeing my photography shift. It's not as if the images that I took that are bright and vibrant don't have a place in someone's home, but they are far less practical. Think about how your work would look in the room you're sitting in right now. Is it meant to be a statement piece that's kind of the center of attention, like this photo of the Dolomites that I took? Or does the room need something more subtle? Something that can catch someone's attention, but can also sit quietly on a wall without needing someone's attention. 
So when I sat down and I looked through all of my work, I realized the majority of it were dominant pieces. Photos that wanted everyone's attention. Photos that stopped people from scrolling on social media. Photos that didn't go well in most rooms. That was about two years ago, and ever since then, I've started thinking about my work differently. Don't get me wrong, I'll still shoot an epic shot if it's in front of me, you've watched me do it right here on this channel, but it got me thinking about how a scene's gravity and allure will manage itself framed on a wall. It also got me more interested in learning about different papers and presentations. If you go online right now, you'll probably be completely overwhelmed by all the options you have for printing. Metal and acrylic and glossy and matte and platinum and luster and satin and textures and the list is endless. And the only experience I really had was that big, grand, vibrant prints, like that one of the Dolomites I just showed you, look great on metal. But that's all I really knew. So what I did is I ordered a few different prints on different types of paper with different photos to just see how they present themselves using different surfaces and textures. I highly recommend that you do this, and many places actually offer these little packs that give you an idea of all the different paper types, but it's not using your own image. So what I really recommend is you take your own image and get it printed on three to seven different types of paper and see how it turns out and pick out which one you like the most. What matters is understanding what papers and finishes look best depending on the type of photo you're printing. This is kind of where the art and exploration of printing can really matter. Choosing that medium is so important for your finalized image. And it can definitely be a little overwhelming at first. How are you supposed to know what papers are gonna match your photos? Ideally, I'd love to be an absolute master at this to be able to just see a photo and know exactly what paper would match the needs of each particular image in my portfolio. Or at the very least, be able to print an image on a few different options and pick which one works best. Well, living in my car makes testing prints basically impossible, and I'm also pretty far from a master printer. I'm more like a Padawan, if you will. What I decided to do was narrow down my photos into different categories to try and simplify my prints. Images with lots of contrast and vibrant colors, it's one of them. Images with more muted textures and tones is another one, and images that needed the paper to almost glow. If I could find three papers for each of those scenarios, it would cover most of my portfolio. Okay, so before I reveal what papers I picked, let's circle back a little bit to that little bump in the road, literally. Over a year ago, I started working with a local print shop in Denver so that I could have all of my prints done and managed by them, but I got to see and work with every piece before it was sent to the client. I wanted that control and security in knowing each piece was exactly how I envisioned it in the physical form. I realized if my prints ever started to really sell though, managing that and shipping all of them would be extremely time consuming. And I have to imagine that's why so many other YouTube photographers have stopped creating prints like they once did. On top of that, I also decided to live in my car and essentially not have a home, meaning no more local print house. I eventually made the decision to find an alternative solution and give up that precious control, but I would do my absolute best to find a print house that would take my images and make them come to life on paper without my intervention or overseeing. On top of that, I also wanted a service that integrated with my commerce automatically so that once I had everything set up on my website, if someone was to order a print, it would be all automated and I wouldn't need to handle anything. This is known as drop shipping, in case you've ever heard of it, or order fulfillment, but we're gonna to refer to it as drop shipping. Meaning when someone buys a print from me, and enters their information, that information is automatically redirected to my print house and the order is fulfilled, shipped, and tracked, all without me having to do anything. If the print arrives damaged, the print house will also take care of it. Now, all I needed to do was find a print studio who drop shipped, which should be pretty easy, right? Uh, not exactly. I wanted gallery quality prints from a print house, not just generic prints from your standard drop shipping company. I also ideally wanted a service that shipped globally and not just to the US. I found about five to 10 different services. Some didn't integrate with my Squarespace commerce directly. Others had atrocious prices for shipping outside of the country. And a few others just had absurd prices in general. I'm looking at you, Printique by Adorama. I narrowed down my choices to three different print houses, Finerworks, the print space, and Pro Digi. Both Finerworks and the print space were specifically print houses that specialize in photography prints, which was really important to me. ProDigi was similar to a lot of the dropshipping services where they sell mugs and t-shirts and that kind of thing, but they did have an art section, so I thought I would give them a chance as well. I ordered all of these on the same day, Sunday the 14th of November, and this was important because I wanted to test how long it would take to get them to me in Colorado at the time. Just keep in mind that Finerworks, for example, is located in Texas, and the print space is located all the way in the UK, making it kind of an unfair advantage. However, the print space had the images printed and shipped literally the next day, and I actually ended up receiving them on the 17th. The other two companies hadn't even printed the images yet. Finerworks ended up dispatching the images, 
the next day, I want to say the 18th, that Thursday, and they arrived the following week, ProDigi took 10 days just to dispatch the order. Now, delivery time isn't everything. It's not the end of the world if something doesn't get shipped immediately, and ultimately print quality and rendition were most important, but I didn't want this to go unnoticed. Okay, so if you've been wondering what papers I ended up picking, this is that section. However, I'm going to mispronounce the brands, so please be nice in the comments. I ended up picking Kansan Berta and this photo to cover images with high contrast or vibrant colors. I picked Hanamule Photo Rag for more subtle images with muted tones and textures like this one. And lastly, I picked Fuji C-Type Matte for those images so vibrant they needed to glow like this one from the Tetons. I ordered each of these prints and papers from all three print shops, with ProDigi printing on Hanamule German etching instead of the Kansan. Once all of them had arrived, I did a blind test of each, meaning I got my friend to carefully unpackage each print and number them one, two, or three, so that I didn't know which one was which. I went through each print and paid attention to detail, how close it was to my original work, color rendition, and overall quality. And overall, the results from both Finer Works and Print Space were great, with slight differences. But ProDigi got one image close, but the other two were just not up to my standards. This was somewhat expected, considering they were the more generic company, whereas the other two were specifically print houses. I also paid attention to the packaging materials for the shipments. The print space is the only one that ships in all sustainable and recyclable materials. Not to mention they were also the fastest to get to Colorado all the way from the UK in three days. And they ultimately won the blind photo test without any bias of the previous information I just told you. I will admit I was leaning towards them from the beginning because they do have a printer in the UK and Germany and are currently expanding to New York City. What this means is that they can ship to over 170 countries without any issue, and as soon as the print house in New York City becomes active, shipping to the States becomes even more accessible, even though I particularly didn't have any issue with my order. It just makes it easier to get it from point A to point B when it's in the same country. I've actually had these prints in my car for this entire time so that I can talk about them on this video. Sorry about that, my memory card actually got full, but I did switch my autofocus to spot so that it's not just trying to detect my eye, so we should be able to look at these images a little bit easier. So the first image that we're gonna start with is the Fuji C-Type Matte. And you can tell it's definitely got some gloss to it, but it's still not uh, super shiny. It's more of like a luster, and if you don't know what that means, definitely highly recommend you order some of your prints with different stock. You can see, if I can focus in on here, how that looks, some of those details. And I just absolutely love the way that it looks for these super vibrant images where you almost want something to glow, like I said. Um, especially for this image where I wanted the flowers to look like they're coming off the page, essentially. I don't use this medium as much as the other two that I'm gonna show you. This one I use very specifically to an image that really has that particular bright spot um, where I just want it to like pop off the page. And this looks absolutely stunning in print. Um, super happy with this. So the next one is this image that I took in Utah. This one is the Hanamule, Hanamule, Hanam, yeah, Hanamule, Hanam, I don't know, I'm not German. Um, I'm assuming it's German. Uh, photo rag, not German etching. Don't get those two confused. Those are different types of paper. Um, so the Hanamule photo rag. And this is a pretty much an industry standard, um, super thick stock. Uh, that's one nice thing about both this one and the Canson is that they're very high quality papers. Um, and I chose this image on this particular paper because I wanted to see not only how well it would do details on a smaller print, but also how well it would rendition those colors. Because even though this image is kind of muted in terms of tones, it has a lot of tones between those particular colors that are in it. And also if you can tell, let's see if I can, I'm not sure you'll be able to tell, there's a lot of texture and lines that are in this image. And this particular stock goes so well with this image in terms of how it looks, um, the tones, the textures that are actually on the stock of the, the paper, and it just feels really good. And what I was mostly concerned about is that considering how thick this paper is and how much it's going to absorb ink, that it's just not gonna display enough detail. But I'm completely wrong, and it shows the image almost perfectly, even on the small size. Absolutely gorgeous. This paper is probably my favorite, but it doesn't necessarily do well with more contrasty or vibrant images. 
Um, it works really well for these muted images like this, or especially images that have a lot of texture in them. So for those images that need a little bit more contrast, that's where the Canson Berta comes in. Barta, Barta, Canson Barta, that's what I'm gonna go with. Like I said, wasn't gonna get them right. Um, and you can tell this is more of a glossy tone. That's definitely, I would say it is glossy, but it's like a muted gloss if I had to describe it. But it does such a good job at rendering tones and contrast and color. And I'm sure I'm hoping you're able to see that on the screen right now, even though obviously you're watching a YouTube video of a video of a print. So you're never really gonna know until you see it in person. But trust me as someone that worked on this photo, took this photo, and has seen it on many different mediums, it looks absolutely fantastic on this paper. And I really like the way it came out for this particular image. And so I used these images to kind of give me an idea of what images would work best on these papers. So I've ordered a few others to see how they work and how they look, but these are the images that I chose for very specific reasons such as detail, colors, contrast, vibrancy, and all of those things. And I absolutely love the way all of them came out. And if you're interested on my print shop, Every print that you click on will tell you details about the paper and the print for that particular image. I curated that and picked exactly the paper that I wanted to use for all of those prints. So if you're interested, you can check it out down below. No pressure though. Let's get back to the rest of the video. So ultimately I went with the print space and they've been great so far. I've also been really happy with the choices in paper and how they represent my own work. Also, I know some of you might be wondering why I didn't choose Smug Mug considering all of their prints are handled through Bay Photo, which is also a great print studio. My problem with Smug Mug is that it just gives the user too many options and disconnects my work from the medium. Remember how I mentioned it's really important to match a photo to a specific paper. I don't want to leave that choice up to the consumer because it could result in receiving a lackluster version of my work. More options for consumers would likely mean I would actually make more sales, but I would rather give them less options knowing each piece is curated by me. There's plenty of great places to order prints from and I highly recommend that if you live in a bigger city to use some local shop or more hands-on experience. Don't hesitate to buy an economical photo printer and try printing photos yourself. No matter what you do though, just print. It will change your work and how you view your own photography as a whole. The satisfaction I've gotten as a photographer seeing my work in print, only me, no one else has to see it, is leaps and bounds more than the satisfaction I've ever gotten from posting an image for people to see online. I cannot recommend it enough and I hope that this video pushes you to try it out and go explore new mediums. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week. Later. In a space surrounded by the presence of other tangible things and touching my prints in physical form for the first time is as if it exists in the real world. Oh, that isn't good. Oh, that's not good. <laughs>